Greetings radio people, welcome back to the shack. It's the 28th of March 2020 and the UK is pretty much in lockdown now for COVID-19 to try and prevent the spread of this pretty hideous disease that's making its way around the globe. Quite a few people have been in touch with me about the power meter project. Now last time, my last video on the power meter, I promised no more on this topic, but unfortunately I'm a liar. So here's another quick catch up on the final finish up, finishing up of that project. Now, you may remember uh, when I did the QRP Labs um, at Linear Amplifier, I built a very experimental directional coupler, which looked like that. The directivity was fairly pants, but it kind of did the job that we needed it to do in the circumstances. I then tried to improve on that a bit with my hideous construction techniques and built this piece of junk, um, which improved the directivity quite significantly, actually. This gave me about 30 dB of directivity. But the problem with this, though, is that it's external to the device. It's quite big and bulky, and you need a couple of cables to feed the power from there into the meter that we were building. Now you may remember that G8KWX got in touch with me and he spoke to me about a directional coupler by DJ0ABR. He was then kind enough to send me a couple of circuit boards of that coupler and this is what mine looks like. I've built mine so we've got two separate cords and the AD8307s are actually on board this um, coupler design so the output is basically a forward and reflected voltage level. Now, I've then taken this coupler into my final build, but downstream of it, I've used a rail-to-rail op-amp to do the trick that we described in the last video, which is where we take the potential 0 to 5 volts out of the 88307 and convert that to as much as possible from 0 to 3.3 to give the analog to digital converter in the STM32 to use as much granularity in that as possible. So this little circuit has been built downstream of the directional coupler and included in the final build. And I've also included, if you remember last time, I talked about a Kanga project meter that was published in QST uh, about 15 years ago I built mine. This is the front end from that one. This part on the left is the front end. Again, I've got a rail to rail op amp here. So here is the Fritzig diagram of the final build. So what we've got, we've got three effectively external voltages feeding into our STM32. We've got the forward and reflected from the rail to rail op amps that are downstream of the directional coupler. And then we've got the output from the DBM meter front end, which is feeding in here. I've got my favorite ILA, ILI 9341 display with touch screen. The touch screen allows you to switch between the different modes of the power meter. So let me show you the inside of it and then I'll show you it running and then I promise I'll shut up about this. So this is what the final build looks like. Um, on the back panel here is the uh, DJ0ABR directional coupler. This is mounted on a pair of BNC sockets which are actually on the back of the box here. So the, uh, the, the external connections are directly on the board effectively. Then downstream of that the uh, reflected and forward voltage levels are then fed to this board which contains the rail to rail op amp schematic that I showed you. So the output of this board is effectively 0 to 3.3 .3 volts or as near as damn it for the full RF range that we're looking to sense and then the output of that goes to the STM32 board, blue pill board that we've got down here. This is the input circuitry for the DBM meter part of the project, so there's a BNC socket on the front for that. So RF is fed into there, there's the AD8307 and again there's the rail to rail op amp here giving us a voltage that's certainly in the range of 0 to 3.3 which again is fed to the STM32. This is purely a power supply I've taken, I want to run everything here really off my shack power supply at 13.8 volts. I've included an LM317 to regulate it down to about 8.5 or 9 volts. Then there's a 5 volt regulator here, which is powering the onboard 3.3 volt regulator on the STM32. And on the op amp board, I've also included another voltage regulator before the 3.3 volt regulator that's here, purely to try and spread the heat around a bit, because getting from 13.8 volts down to 3.3 is quite a big ask of a single voltage regulator. So that's the, the build. On the front panel, I've put a power switch, an LED, and the BNC socket. 
uh, plus the TFT display. And on the back there's the forward and reflected port, so an antenna and a transmitter socket, plus I've included a power pole connector for DC. The power pole uh, shroud, if you like, is a 22 millimeter screw thread that's been 3D printed, as has the um, TFT display. So I'll spin it round, show you the front panel working, and then I do definitely promise this time no more on this topic. So here's the meter running in, uh, if you like, power meter mode. I'm feeding in, uh, well, I've got 13 dB coming out of my signal generator down a, a fairly long, wet noodle into the back of this, uh, into the transmitter port. And then I've got a 50 ohm dummy load again on the end of a fairly lengthy bit of uh, string connected to the antenna port. So the forward power is actually reading plus 12 dBm or 12.5 dBm and the reflected power is reading minus 16.5 dBm. The calculated SWR is one to one. So that's working very much as I'd expect. I've put an additional mode in. If you touch the screen it'll switch into a power in watts mode but because my signal is so tiny uh, of course that that doesn't register in watts but if you were feeding a lot more RF in you'd find that that would be working perfectly in watts and then the third mode for the power meter is a dBm meter so that's now using the connector on the front panel that you can see here so it's measuring the RF that's being fed in through that front panel and displaying it in dBm I've got a attenuator stuck in the in the path of this signal at the moment which goes in 10 dB steps so you can see that this is pretty much working as expected I'm not entirely sure why I've rounded this to the nearest half a dB there's no real need here I might change that in the software but you'll see that this kind of works as very much as we'd expect it to I'm very pleased with this I think it's really neat there's one other thing that I want to show you in this crazy time that we're living of uh, the world of COVID-19. A lot of people are drawing rainbows and sticking them in their windows as a symbol of hope. If you ground pin A5, I think it is, and power this on, there's a little bit of an Easter egg built in there for you. As ever, if you like what I'm doing, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. I'd very much appreciate it.